From its earliest inception, Hong Kong has been of two worlds. It has been of China, while nonetheless remaining apart from China. It has embodied the Western presence in China, while remaining distinct from the West as well. In recent decades, Hong Kong has also been a staging ground for foreign direct investments into the Pearl River Delta region and beyond, and thus has served as a venue for global markets to engage Chinese socialism. This unique hybridity is what makes Hong Kong, Hong Kong. Its distinctive history has given rise to a correspondingly unique geography for Hong Kong as well. Beginning as an island outpost of a Western seafaring nation, Hong Kong's protective harbor and surrounding seas evoked a deep moat around a castle. Later, as Hong Kong acquired its new territories, its geography evolved accordingly. While it might not have been so obvious at the time, this further encroachment onto Chinese territory also marked an increase in Hong Kong's dependency on the mainland. Indeed, Hong Kong's continuing historical and geographical evolution cannot be understood without reference to changes taking place within China, and this is most evident from developments over the course of the 20th century. During this period, China underwent several remarkable transitions. From that of a dynastic imperial power that had endured for millennia to a fledgling republic with competing warlords. From a weak and highly corrupted nation state overrun by foreign powers to a new state run by battle-tested, ideologically driven revolutionaries. From a closed communistic society based on state allocation of resources to a much more open, market-oriented economy and from an agrarian society populated by peasants to an urbanizing society with increasingly worldly and sophisticated denizens. Throughout this period, Hong Kong adapted as it needed to while continuing to function as a bridge between different worlds. Today, Hong Kong is no longer an isolated island estranged from its surroundings. Satellite images reveal Hong Kong to be one patch within a vast expanse of urbanization stretching from one end of the Pearl River Delta to the next. Hong Kong is undeniably part of this vast metropolis, but Hong Kong also gives this region a unique flavor. Here we have one metropolis, two systems. In this documentary, we examine the challenges facing Hong Kong in terms of six fundamental policy domains. These are of concern to any large city, but take on a special character in the context of a single metropolitan area with two systems. Hong Kong is well known for its economic and financial position in the global arena. The city has scored highly on services and facilities, its financial market and business environment, as well as its legal system. Hong Kong has a close relationship with mainland China. Situated near Shenzhen, Hong Kong is the leading city in the Pearl River Delta region and serves as its economic impetus. Its favorable position, advanced information systems, and highly efficient services and facilities all contribute to its economic development and status within the PRD. The city plays a significant role as an effective agent in the financial, banking, logistic, and trading services. However, Trading and logistic services, key industries from which Hong Kong has benefited because of the border, are now being challenged. Cities like Shenzhen and Guangzhou have been making great strides in developing seaport and airport facilities and capacities. With the mainland deregulating exports and imports, Shenzhen will take on more responsibilities in the logistics and trading services. Hong Kong's position and part of its key industries may shrink to some degree. Since 2003, individual tourists from major cities in the mainland have been allowed to apply for travel permits to visit Hong Kong. The border is no longer a constraint for tourism. The number of tourists from mainland China has since increased from 8.5 million in 2003 to 42 million in 2011. As we get increasing demand from China for goods and services, including housing, offered here in Hong Kong, this has the effect of increasing demand for goods and services 
in the local area, which puts upward pressure on prices. Winners include existing homeowners and established businesses who benefit from capital gains or increased businesses. On the other hand, we have people who are looking to buy their first home, existing renters, or consumers who are now facing higher prices and are at a disadvantage. One of the key ways for Hong Kong to maintain its leading role in the PRD is to clearly solidify its role as a global center in the future. Chinese companies that are effective in the Chinese environment are not necessarily going to succeed in outside the Chinese environment because it's a totally different environment. And it takes organizational learning and adjustment to figure out how to operate in a non-Chinese environment by a Chinese company. That's a role that Hong Kong can play, an important role. In Hong Kong's frenzied property market, housing prices have already surpassed the record set in 1997. Prices are still very high that home ownership has become an unattainable dream for the younger generation. 7.07 .07 million people live on Hong Kong's 1,108 square kilometers of land. The city has the third most expensive real estate in the world. With the current state of the property market, middle-class homebuyers have become frustrated. Some people live in public apartments. They are very small, and applicants wait for approximately three years or more until they can move in. Some people live in subdivided flats and cage homes, but they are actually not cheap. The average rent per square foot is higher than that for Hong Kong's top 10 housing estates. However, these kinds of dwellings are illegal, and the government has begun to take action. At its root, housing is really a matter of supply and demand, and in Hong Kong, the supply falls short. Hong Kong is the world's most expensive place to buy property. One reason is because of a huge lack of supply. There aren't enough new housing complexes set to come online in the next two to three years, like the ones right behind me. Another issue is because of interest rates, very low interest rates here in Hong Kong. That's because of the Hong Kong currency's peg to the U.S. dollar. And also, there's the issue of mainland Chinese buyers coming into Hong Kong and pushing up prices. Some home buyers are believed to be speculators and others are seeking property havens, while the remaining purchasers desire better education, medical treatment and social services. There are about 400,000 Hong Kong citizens who have bought homes in Shenzhen because of lower prices. Apartments in Hong Kong can be up to three to five times the cost of similar apartments in Shenzhen. To relieve the demand in Hong Kong, the government should improve public transportation between Hong Kong and Shenzhen, as well as pass legislation to facilitate the ease of crossing the border. The Hong Kong government should also allocate more space to build public housing for the grassroots population and subsidize housing to encourage home ownership among middle-income families. In addition, the government should explore new ways to provide land such as sea reclamation. Furthermore, in terms of the trans-border issue, Hong Kong permanent residents should be given priority to own homes. Transportation is the cornerstone to the massive market that exists in Hong Kong. Via ports, vehicles and planes, trade with the outside world is conducted. Issues posed by the border are increased competition to Hong Kong's major shipping hubs and high infrastructure improvement costs. Hong Kong's world-renowned air cargo hub and seaport are losing business to the newer and cheaper options in Guangdong, Guangzhou, and Shenzhen. Guangdong's planned multi-billion RNB port networks, railways, and waterways are both cheaper and state-of-the-art. Air transport is also being affected. Since 2009, FedEx Express began operations at its new Asia Pacific hub located at Baiwen International Airport in Guangzhou. 
FedEx looks at Guangzhou Hub as a strategic investment to take full advantage of the massive increase in e-business. The Advance Hub, combined with the support from FedEx, makes the Guangzhou Baiwen Airport become a strong competitor to Hong Kong Transport. Community transportation is another large issue. The planned Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge will connect Hong Kong and the west side of the Pearl River Delta area and significantly benefit Hong Kong in freight transport, trading, and other related industries. However, a 32 million, 6.8 million RMB public cost, environmental disruption, and the potential for even more local traffic and ferry route disruption make the bridge a debated issue in Hong Kong. Developers of the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge can learn funding lessons from the near failure of the Channel Tunnel. The Channel Tunnel is one of the greatest projects in human history. The Channel Tunnel nearly failed due to a funding strategy known as BOT, where full funding is undertaken by a private company. Without any government assistance, the private company faced too much risk, continuous losses, huge debt, and operating problems that pushed the company to the verge of bankruptcy. The Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge will similarly be funded only by the government and lack private funding. And the current model we are using for the bridge will probably move towards another extreme, which the efficiency and effectiveness would not be maximized. Private investment will likely improve the construction process and reduce overspending and delay. To the credit of the excellent work of the Hong Kong Police Force, Hong Kong is one of the safest large cities in the world. In 2011, Hong Kong experienced only 220 crimes per day in a city of over 8 million people. Hong Kong also has had a very active border with its motherland of China. The nature of a border is to serve as a first-line defense to protect home territory. For Hong Kong, this means monitoring millions of goods shipped via air, rail, road, sea. It also means people. Like any other region with an active border along a less developed territory, Hong Kong is not impervious to the ill effects. Beyond high profile cases such as tainted infant formulas, which cost children their lives, prostitution, drugs, money, and guns put strain on the police. According to Hong Kong police officials, Pakistani and South Asian immigrants, as well as Mexican drug cartels, now use the Hong Kong mainland border along Shenzhen to illegally cross into Hong Kong and expand their reach. Hong Kong has over 22 million visitors from mainland China crossing. This does not include visitors from other lands. The plan to reduce the restricted zone by 2030 will minimize the buffer area, making target hardening unachievable. More importantly, people find ways around secure borders. History has taught us that if we build a 10-foot wall, people will find a 12-foot ladder. The only way to address the problems is to focus on a second line of defense that Hong Kong Police Force provides. One effective way to combat many crimes borders introduce into a territory is through confidential informants. Interviews with Hong Kong police revealed that they are not used in the SAR. Their ability to blend within the criminal groups allows them access that would take law enforcement years to gain as an undercover. For the Hong Kong police force, this is even more important since the force has few officers who can blend within non-Chinese immigrant communities. Not only could access allow for quicker arrest of offenders, it would also allow the police force to better determine threats and preemptively respond. Finally, implementation of a strong public relations campaign to make the police force more accessible to the public is needed. Law enforcement is often the first government agency the public will come in contact with, making officers ambassadors to the public. Attention to these issues would keep Hong Kong attractive for global businesses, while keeping Hong Kong one of the safest and most stable societies in the world. 
the movement of migrants into Hong Kong has created a growing wealth disparity in the city. The city's migrant poor may blend into the background amongst high rises and shopping malls, but their presence is certainly felt in the financial strain that they place on Hong Kong's public services. 60% of publicly funded healthcare is used by the elderly. One third of the elderly live amongst the city's poor. Hong Kong will soon have to face this aging population when in 20 years, one quarter of the population will be over the age of 65. Hong Kong's lowest human development score is in education. There is intense pressure amongst even the youngest children in Hong Kong schools to succeed. We have 18,000 students crossing the border every day to primary and secondary school and kindergarten, squeezing into our, our limited kind of school space. So that's why some local parents are, are expressing uh, discontent I mean, because they are competing school pressures, school places. An inspiring model to reform Hong Kong's educational sector is the California Community College system. It is the largest higher education system in the United States with 112 colleges providing a gateway to higher education for over 2 million students per year, offering associate's degrees, transfer opportunities to four-year institutions, community-based workforce training, and language skills training. Comparing students who come from backgrounds that uh, many of them are first-time college attendees in their families. Uh, they come from socioeconomically challenged areas and it's a really exciting opportunity for many of these students uh, who are first-time college uh, attendees to get them prepared to be competitive in today's workforce. Expanding the current community college system and providing general and lower level education courses will better prepare Hong Kong students for more advanced studies and alleviate the competitiveness of university admission. This will not only reduce the number of years in university, but also reduce the cost of education, improve graduation rates, and better prepare students for the workforce. By building campuses in low-income migrant communities, community colleges can target young migrant workers, train them in needed industries, and fill the gap in the workforce that has developed from the aging population and balance the senior ratio. Now, if you look at it in the, in the full view, it's really a, a chance to have the best of all worlds. All worlds, I mean that literally, all worlds. I mean a new infusion of family values. A new infusion of, of hard work and industriousness. A new in, infusion of, um, of ingenuity and creativity, invention. Integrating migrants into society and elevating their socioeconomic status not only lessens their individual plight, but decreases the burden on the public and social service sector as well. Hong Kong is filled with picture-perfect landscapes, with 40% of its lands in parks and nature reserves. However, Hong Kong currently faces several environmental challenges. Air pollution, largely from ships and vehicles, often exceeds World Health Organization standards. It harms local ecosystems and results in over 3,000 deaths each year. Water pollution, causes illnesses in residents and tourists, kills and contaminates marine life, and destroys the habitats of threatened species. These challenges are not Hong Kong's alone. They affect the entire Pearl River Delta region and are exacerbated by complications resulting from the nearby border with China. Pollution is not confined by political boundaries. For example, Hong Kong and the PRD share the same airshed and breathe the same air. Environmental quality, then, is a regional problem that can only be solved through effective coordination with the PRD. Some steps have been taken to improve the regional environment. One such effort is the Hong Kong Guangzhou Joint Working Group on Sustainable Development and Environmental Protection. However, current coordination throughout the PRD is insufficient and more collaborative action must be taken. 
Hong Kong is not alone in facing environmental quality challenges. Fortunately for Hong Kong, cross-border collaborative efforts can serve as models to help improve regional environmental quality. The South Coast Air Quality Management District has helped four Southern California counties, including Los Angeles, significantly improve regional air quality. California's legislature merged each county's air quality agencies into one to better address the region's severe smog problem. Beijing can similarly merge such agencies throughout the PRD to one department, which can then develop and enforce regional environmental policies. This department could include representatives from each city in SAR, as well as appointees from Beijing, fostering improved coordination. The Indonesia-Singapore collaboration to deal with land and forest fires in the Jambi province can serve as a model of a country working with an external province on transboundary pollution issue. Hong Kong can apply this framework to collaborate with the PRD in developing a master plan to prevent and mitigate regional pollution. Like Singapore, Hong Kong can provide funding and technical assistance with implementation at the provincial and city levels. These and other examples from around the world inform us of several institutional arrangements that can more effectively address cross-border environmental quality. By applying the aforementioned case studies as models for transboundary collaborations, the regional environment can be improved, and Hong Kong can strengthen its position to become an even more competitive world city. As we have seen, Hong Kong is a product of its unique history it is well poised to meet the challenges of the future and Hong Kong will surely continue to thrive as one of the world's most exciting places for many years to come.